Carol, welcome to the uh, welcome to the Glenn Beck program. Hey, Glenn, lots of things to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> boy, I've I've got a long list for you too. Um, so let's let's start with what happened yesterday and why people should care. So I want to take a step back and talk about you know why the Fed did what it did in terms of raising interest rates what we call 25 basis points or a quarter of a percent. 100 basis points is 1%. Okay. And basically, they were undoing um, the, or at least attempting to start to undo the effects of what they in part caused. Their monetary policy, zero interest rate policy, printing trillions of dollars, the government spending trillions of dollars in terms of fiscal stimulus, turning parts of the economy off and wrecking the labor market and the supply chain. All of those things are the reasons we have inflation today exacerbated by decisions that the Biden administration made around uh, oil and gas dependence and, and whatnot. Right. So basically we had um, inflation, which we've all been talking about and seeing as we go to the grocery store and certainly at the fuel pump and whatnot. And so finally they said, we have to do something. Now I'm gonna tell you, this is a little bit of window dressing because they were doing accommodation. They were in the market purchasing securities last week. So last week they were being accommodated, but this week we have to maintain our credibility and we need to do something. So they decided to raise what is called the Fed funds rate. It's a rate where banks lend to each other overnight in terms of their reserves, and that reverberates through the market. So they had brought that down to a target of zero to a quarter of a percent, and they had held it there for the last couple of years. And they said, okay, well, you know, inflation's getting away. We better raise some interest rates, one of our tools in order to do that. And they took the huge step of a whole quarter of a point wow. increase to do it. Yeah, it's very, very, very so meaningful the, because they need to be credible. Though. Right. The last <laughs> time we had this problem of this size, it took an interest rate of about 19 or 20 percent, <laughs> uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, raising it a quarter is is really is is a joke. Where do you think these interest rates should be? Not not considering killing the economy. I uh, just where yeah. it should be. Should it? If we were in a healthy country, still would it be twenty percent or more? So uh, there are a couple of things to unpack there. First of all, this is an unprecedented situation. We don't have a benchmark because we've never had central banks, not just in the U.S., but around the world, printing trillions upon trillions of dollars. This has just never happened before. And we've never had governments turn off the economy. You, you never have a situation where there's 1.7 jobs available for every job seeker because of what the government did. So we're flying a little bit blind. Um, I've always been a fan of normalized interest rates. I think it's a horrible idea to have the Fed meddling and trying to, sure. to direct things. I want you know I want the market to set it. And so before all of this nonsense started, um, before the financial crisis, the Great Recession financial crisis in 07, 08, which was really the first time we we went totally off the rails mm -hmm. with the zero interest rate policy and the purchase of securities, the interest rates were around you know five plus. Per and you know that seems to be you know a healthy place where things should be. We should not be in a place where we're saying um, you know when you take risk you shouldn't be getting rewarded for it. You know zero percent interest. It, it makes no sense. So in reality, um, you know, we're still at very historically low interest rates, and in a healthy economy, you know to have three, four, five percent would be completely uh, acceptable. We just have been so addicted to this easy money and this free money for so long. I'm not sure how we get out of it. Okay, so f there's a couple of uh, problems with 5% interest rates right now. One would be that people would not be able to afford a new house, et cetera, et cetera, because of inflation and everything else. But the other that nobody ever talks about is we now have a national debt over $30 trillion, and that is just like buying a house. You have an interest rate on that. If we had an interest rate of 5%, how much more money do we have to pay? 
Bingo. This is the dilemma that the Fed has gotten themselves into by keeping down interest rates. They've basically given the government a free pass to just spend and spend and to rack up more and more debt. And we're at a point where the debt is completely out of control and you know has exceeded our level of GDP. So if you think about 30 trillion of debt, and obviously the Fed funds rates and the interest rate on the debt isn't a one-to-one -one correlation, mm -hmm. but we know that as one moves up, the other moves up. So in terms of the interest on our national debt, I want everyone to pay very close attention because this is staggering. For every 1% increase, that is another $300 billion that we have to pay in interest on the national debt. That is our tax dollars that are going to pay more for things that we have already purchased. It is not new purchases. It's literally a finance charge, a almost like credit card interest rate on stuff we have already bought. And this is the dilemma the Fed has because they know as they raise interest rates, this is going to get out of control. The CBO had made a projection that saying that this is going to get out of control. But in their projection, they said, well, you know, we think the yield on the 10-year Treasury note gets to about 2.1% in 2025. So, you know, we're going to have to, to really be concerned maybe in 2029. The yield on the 10-year Treasury note is at that 2.1% today. So, so I don't multiple know. years I, ahead of time. Please talk down to me like I'm in kindergarten. I, I don't understand the yield thing with the Treasury, how that works, how that's affected. So can you explain that? Yeah, so basically um, it's, you know, how much the government has to pay on the de on debt. So it's what the market demands. And obviously, um, you know, if there is a lot of demand for Treasury securities, right. uh, the prices of that go up then the the yield or the interest that you demand is lower because there's a lot of demand. You don't so, have to pay a lot for your debts. But we had been at very, very, very low, even very because low. the Fed was buying up. There was no demand for our, uh, our right. treasuries, uh, which is so, our loan. So, uh, so let me put it in context. What we are paying currently on our national debt in terms of a combined interest rate is somewhere in the neighborhood I've seen projections of you know 1.4 percent to 1.6 percent. So they've been able to finance that at a very low rate, but that number is starting to creep up. And with the Fed increasing interest rates, it will further creep up. And every one percent is 300 billion dollars. So if we have an interest rate of five or five or six <laughs> percent, we're, yeah. we're talking like between two and three trillion dollars more yeah, the, I mean, the entire it's, budget exactly it's just, it's just completely untenable at that point in time okay. so um <laughs> okay. I, I would i would imagine other things happen um in the interim but you know this is why when we talk about um, things like mmt modern monetary theory or why i call it magic money tree that says you well you can just print into infinity because we can just print more. Well, we are now living through that real-time experiment. As we've all said, no, you can't. It causes inflation. It has real costs for the average American. This is the value of every dollar that you hold. All right. So the best thing you can do is get out of credit cards. You should yes. cut those up if you can uh, and pay them off if you can. Get a refi right now because you're probably paying about 16% for your credit cards, correct? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it could be going up and anything that has that adjustable interest rate associated with, some people may have something called an ARM, an adjustable rate mortgage, mm -hmm. where it's, you know, it, it adjusts over time. Maybe it's fixed for a certain number of years, but then it starts to float. Anything that is adjustable rate debt is going to increase in price. And if you, ha if you need financing, let's say you have a business and you haven't taken advantage of low rates yet, you're going to want to lock that in on a fixed basis now because it's not going to get cheaper anytime soon. Now, the other problem, the, the problem with raising interest rates is, let's say you have a business and you need a loan. If, if the interest rates start to go up, that kills that business. They can't afford that loan, just like we can't afford our national debt. Or you want to buy a the 
slow down to the this is you don't know where that switch is you just kind of have to guess and it might shut everything down that's the needle that the fed is trying to thread in addition to dealing with the consequences of the national debt what happens is as they raise interest rates you know their intention is to slow down the economy i mean that's basically right. what it is they want to slow down consumer demand but the question is you know how do you do that without creating a recession or without re uh, creating reverberations so, for the economics of the average American. Can I be really, really cynical? I mean, let, let, in fact, let me go beyond cynical. Let me go into, I'm a thriller writer, okay? And I'm writing a thriller. And for some reason, this country needs to slow down the economy, but they can't slow down the economy because then businesses will fail, but they don't really care about the average person. You know what I mean? That's going to fail. That's fine. We'll print more money. We'll well, tell them to stay home or whatever. Um, wouldn't one way to slow the economy for the consumer, but not slow the economy for the big corporations, would a war do that? Um, <laughs> I think that would completely change the tenor of the economy. But uh, I think that raising the interest rates does that because kind of like we saw over the last couple of years, if you are a big corporation, you you've this. taken advantage of that debt. You have that war chest, you have that strong balance sheet. So in terms of the transfer of wealth, um, you know, that is one way to do that. But the war, you know, that would completely change the tenor of, you know, who um, the right. uh, services industry, for example.